would just unmute. But during the talk, I hope that you can mute yourself first uh, so that we can hear um, a good audio from um, Prozam. Okay, Prozam, uh, I think you can start now. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sakina. Uh, Professor, Professor Maria, Dr. Sakina. Oh, below, bro. Dr. Oh, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Okay, good. Uh, uh, terima kasih. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Uh, salam. Uh, good morning. 10.30 a.m. in the morning. 10.35, in fact. Um, uh, to all the audience participants. Um, so, today um, I'm going to share you with you all about uh, something that I think interesting. I, I've been working for, you know, for this task for as a neurosurgeon brain surgeon for with professor jeffrey since uh 20, about 20 about something like 20 years 15 15 years in usm um so i noticed um brain um is special <laughs> uh special uh, um compared to other organ probably uh so brain physics um is something that new uh let's shift to first slide why brain physics now is it's a new thing now it's coming up um as i said before um this general brain multiphysics just came out uh, in december november so the second uh, um volume just came out in no november 2020 should be november 2020 mistyping even the staff in the general still you know got headache to establish this general so it's a new physics i think by oxford um groups uh, with uh, Israel uh, scientists, eh? it's a brain multiphysics. And then uh, the Cambridge um, University has started lecture on um, brain physics as well. I think one of the professors there uh, interested in this. Um, he, uh, he's not uh, medical, uh, but he collaborated with the medical neurosurgeon there in Cambridge. Uh, he's more like physicist, uh, division of neurosurgery in Cambridge one few centers in US and in, in Japan. So in Asia, uh, not really. I think people not really going to this brain physics yet. Um, this published paper related to the brain physics, you can um, you know, look through the journal and so on what the idea, you, know, you can have the ideas, uh, what been published, uh, is that related to your field or not? So see this, time, space, space, time, thermodynamic, uh, 3D brain information, in, uh, heat and information. Uh, even uh, in other general, as well, they're talking about brain physics as well. For example, here, general of cerebral blood flow metabolism. So they're talking about the flow of the blood according to the physics theory. Okay. Um, even the physics play a big role, major role in innovation. Uh, here for neurosurgeon, um, based on physics principles, so the, the scientists innovate the the um, microscope you know, and the scope to see clearly. So all this based on physics. I think if no physicists, then we're not going anywhere in terms of technology. So to start with, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about the brain. Look at the brain here, a picture here. So uh, especially about the brain, it has two, right and left hemisphere. You can, you can see right here and left hemisphere there. Uh, so always two, you see, male, female, day and night, so pair, all in pairs, uh, you know, uh, all in Quran says all in pairs. So here you have right hemisphere of the brain and left hemisphere of the, of the brain. So if you go deeper, you can see the surface and you can see the deeper structure as well. If you dig inside, there's a deeper structure. But the point of, uh, here, the major point is the right hemisphere and left hemisphere of the brain. The second point, probably you can see here is a scar. Um, the brain is inside the skull, protected by the thick bone. And if you close it, probably inside it is a dark uh, darkness. So uh, darkness probably matters for the brain. Okay, um, uh, not much light. Okay, uh, I think that's something interesting to, in terms of physics uh, principle. I think so. The brain lies at the higher most of our uh, body structure. Uh, um, it has two hemisphere, right and left hemisphere. Uh, covered by the thick bone, uh, skull, maybe dark inside. And then, uh, sec uh, further, you know, further uh, principle, probably, it, it is meshy. It, it is uh, um, meshy and mushy. Meshy, like, um, network, like, but mushy is a fat like. Huh? So, you, you see here, um, the brain is a fat like. If you touch it, um, you easily uh, destroy the brain. 
So when we do surgery, we remove uh, the tumor maybe here, here. So we try to save the brain as much as possible, the normal brain. So it's a mushy brain. And yet, this mushy brain give, um, you know, um, uh, we are uh, perplexed with it. Even though it's mushy um, brain, but a lot of uh, secrets in, lie in it. Okay, so why fat, why water must be reason. Huh? God create everything with reason. Nothing, no reason, always with reason. Here, the MRI brain, you can see the pictures of the brain on the MRI imaging, brain imaging. Uh, this is a midline cut, uh, midline cut, a sagittal cut, where you can see the the, 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 the two uh, part of the brain at midline divided by the corpus callosum here, the midline structure. And this is a brain stem, and this is a cerebellum. cerebellum. People call it small brain sometimes. This is a cerebrum, but this is a small brain, cerebellum. This is a brain stem. Brain stem is the one that um, do respiration, uh, heart rate, blood pressure. And then if you go up here, maybe you see the thalamus, hypothalamus. All this connect with the brain stem. So this deep nuclei play big role, major role, and people still not know much about this deep nuclei. Okay, uh, a lot of secrets uh, still. So, uh, but we know uh, certain things like um, respiration here, breathing here, uh, control the hormone here, pituitary gland is a pineal gland here. Control your maturity. Boys become uh, men, uh, girls become women. Uh, something to do with the hormone here. Um, the, the cerebellum um, behind here and the, the occipital loop vision here, the frontal loop for your planning judgment, the motor cortex here, where you move your hand, your sensation here. But all this interconnected. There's a network. Okay. Um, so the brain can be divided into frontal loop uh, here, this color here, frontal loop, and parietal loop, temporal loop. So people divide it for purpose of study. Okay. So you um, just purpose of study. Maybe they are. You, you can regard it as one, 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 one thing. Huh? Uh, people has been uh, published in the papers as one brain, as a one uh, ball-like huh? uh, structure, or brain has been represented as rugby ball-like structure. You know, so why it divide? Uh, just purpose of study. Same as the brain stem as well. Okay, so the first principle that I notice, you all can hear me. I wonder, I'm talking to myself or? Yes, yes. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Um, sometimes I need to interact with you because I, uh, you know, through the internet, sometimes it's off, then I talk to myself alone. <laughs> okay, so brain physics number one, um, I noticed one thing is about buoyancy. Okay, the, the Cambridge guy, I think the uh, quite senior, he, he says there's no buoyancy, but uh, uh, lately, uh, even uh, from the previous data also shows that there's a buoyancy element in it. Uh, one of the big reasons is the, 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 the brain, uh, when you measure outside, uh, when you take it out the brain outside, is, it weighs about 1,400 grams. But when you measure with the MRI based uh, measurement of the weight of the brain inside the cranium, based on the MRI, so the values come up very uh, much reduced to 50 grams. So this, uh, based on this is the Archimedes principle like buoyancy. Um, so because of the buoyancy, uh, so uh, people say this brain is in the microgravity state or posture. So this is uh, uh, Archimedes, like if you put things inside and then um, it will float. Um, why I say so, uh, one of these, uh, the weight, and second, you see the posture of the brain. It, it's bending. It's bending. Um, if you met a, uh, a line, uh, from the brainstem, and then you cross with the line for the cerebrum, uh, you, you got an angle here. So it's not vertical, uh, it's bending. So same in the medical terms. Uh, when, the, when the doctor talking about the ventral uh, from the front, dorsal from behind, but for the cerebrum, ventral is below. So the term change because of this bending. Uh, that's a second reason. Um, the third reason, I think, uh, here, when, when you look at the development of the fetus, baby uh, it all, always require fluid uh, from the beginning so if if the mother has not much uh, amniotic fluid so you call it oligohydromnios or something like that then uh, the fetus is not well developed if you have too much fluid also it's not uh, well developed uh, some sort of uh, congenital anomalies happen 
So it has, it has to be some some sort of certain force, gravity that must suit uh, the development of the fetus. And it's not G, it must be micro G. So um, this G and anti G, Hello, I, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, this is just um, curiosity lah, because uh, when you say too much fluid and less fluid, yang ni uh, banyak berlaku in mothers with kencing manis where they normally generate too much fluid lah. So it affects the brain as well during the baby's growth ke? Uh, may, uh, yeah, yeah, should, should, should do research on it. I think so because of the buoyancy. Because of buoyancy, I think so. Uh, should look into details. Because the, the amount of fluid will correlate with the amount of vol, uh, volume, pressure. So enough right pressure will make a uh, 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 fetus development, uh, you know, uh, normal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what I think. Uh, so when we when, when look again, uh, this uh, posture of the brain, I think from the beginning, it's always in the buoyant environment. Uh, is um, required fluid for development. And then go to my next slide. Um, this came up in the uh, YouTube. I just looked for this uh, YouTube uh, video. And then one guy uh, push, uh, put this up. Um, density of the brain equal to density of CSF. That's why the brain is buoyant. So, but again, uh, the, the question is CSF, uh, the fluid inside the brain. The, you know, the CSF is a fluid covering the brain. It's not much, you know, but the brain uh, quite big compared to the CSF volume. But, uh, but you think, you, you look at the brain uh, uh, structure itself, uh, it, it contains water and, and fat. So I, I, I go through it. So here, okay. Um, despite of having a um, small amount of CSF inside the brain, but I think there's a buoyancy, uh, buoyancy inside it. It's not really 100% uh, floating. Why not 100%? Because of this anchoring, there's an anchor. Because the brainstem anchor there, the nerve anchor there, the blood, the blood supply, you know, the blood, the blood vessel also come up from here, anchor the brain. It's not one hundred percent, you know, uh, buoyancy. Uh, uh, so it must be some sort of micro G. Um, I th uh, that's what I think. So here, look, look at the contents of the brain. Despite of having CSF, minimal amount of CSF, uh, the the brain. Is seventy percent of brain is water and thirty percent is solid, and from that thirty percent, seventy seventy percent of them are fat. So I think because of this combination, then that's the reason why brain behave uh, in micro G. Okay, um, you know why? Because of this um, micro G. If you walk uh, into the ocean, you walk to the swimming pool, you have to walk, you have to swim. You have to be in the micro G posture. You cannot walk, walk vertically because of the buoyant fall. Uh, so this uh, 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 micro G posture for those not not get used to what is buoyancy. So I uh, am micro G posture. Uh, this is a buoyant uh, bo uh, micro G posture. Uh, it's like out, uh, in, when you are in the outer space, when you are in the uh, in the in the ocean. Uh, it's a micro G bending posture basically, suju or bending suju posture. Um, so it's interesting. Look here, um, baby. Um, it require that buoyant force is uh, uh, it's not vertical. Uh, vertical is a gravity posture, just like we are now. We, when we are matured, fifty years old, forty years old, vertical. Uh, but when we uh, were young, and when, when we when we're going to be old, then we start to ha revert to micro G or bending or suji posture. Okay. Um, look here. Um, the brain, astronaut, uh, fetus, all buoyant. And then I was in. US uh, about four or five years ago, and then a top uh, neurosurgery, neuroscience, and then there's one guy from NASA give a talk on it. I think it's a very good slide. Um, it, it said here, gravity is a physical parameter that together with pressure and temperature define the state of a system. Uh, and NASA said the hidden G has been ignored. Uh, G force does determine any system on Earth. Okay. So when something uh, embryologically or embryology or biology want to develop well, the, the G must be reduced. That, that's the point he want, to, I mean, he want to say. So when the force of gravity is removed, other forces, surface tension, capillary force become predominant and drive a different system dynamic. Uh, so uh, baby, fetus, whatever can develop well if in the micro G. So this slide from the NASA slide. Okay, uh, gravity there, temperature, what else I want to say here? Oh uh, yeah, it's about uh, uh, all this. Uh, I think it's a buoyancy, showing the buoyancy. Okay, 
He's talking about something else, but I, I add on. I, I get some idea from, from, from his slide. Okay, this, um, I think, uh, micro G is not just only the brain. In my opinion, everywhere, uh, in the ocean, in the space, uh, it's not totally zero G, but must, must be some sort of G, so micro G. With the stem cell, even stem cell, even the, you know, when you go deep inside DNA, it, uh, whatever inside the cell, I think they all, uh, some element of micro G. Uh, so when you look at the two largest, um, uh, um, God created microgravity space, or people say heaven and earth, probably you can look at the heaven there up in the sky. So it's, um, it's not zero G, it's some sort of micro G. And when you go to the, when you look into the ocean, well, who like to go to Pentian Island? I like to go to Pentian Island. It's a very nice uh, island there, beautiful. So um, the water is so clean, blue, and this is the ocean, the blue ocean. And then I read the book about the evolution. So people say uh, people say uh, we coming from the ocean. Uh, I disagree, but maybe human, uh, maybe animals and plants, maybe so. Uh, 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 when, when you learn about the cells, uh, its origin from the ocean, and then maybe they there's a, a, a evolution to it, and then becoming bigger plants, shifted to the land, uh, becoming uh, you know multi cell and so on. That's the theory behind it. But uh, they say human also coming from it. But I I disagree disagree with it. Why why I say so? Because human is different from the uh, um, other uh, creations. Uh, one thing, uh, people say human can create complex thing, but one thing human has insight. Uh, who am I? <laughs> you all, you can ask who am I? Okay, the question, who am I? Who am I? But um, I know, I wonder whether uh, chimpanzees or um, uh, dog can ask who am I? Okay, uh, the insight is special for human. Uh, but interesting, look at this picture here, all bending. Invertebrate uh, from the ocean. And then coming to the vertebrate animal, and then probably to the, uh, you know, uh, uh, all this complex animal, but not us. So what I'm trying to say, Adam and Eve, if you are, if you are believing it, Adam and Eve probably not been sent by the rocket, uh, you know, by the rocket from the outer space down to us. So then what, how, how, um, you know, how had Adam and Eve moved from A to B? Is that from, by the rocket? No, I don't think so. So let's come the next, uh, my, my ne next few, uh, I mean, slide that I'm probably talking about. Um, uh, light, open light, or you call it, um, how should I say? Um, uh, light intercept with the light. Okay, let, that's later on, okay? Um, so look here the, at, the, at the embryology. Um, uh, embryology, formation of the brain. This, that's another thing interesting about the brain. Um, it's, it's formed by a dot, a sperm ovum formed like a dot. Huh? If you turn into mathematical calculation, mathematics is a, is a dot. And then if you can make an algorithm, then uh, it becoming a tube. You know, if, you, if you can imagine a tube, one tube, but that tube is bending. It's not, it's not vertical G tube, it's a bending tube because of the micro G. That's why I said before, but mother has amniotic fluid. So micro, uh, there's a bending tube, and from there the cell differentiate, and um, because of that differentiation, it forms uh, the brain cell. Okay, the brain cell coming out from that cavity. This cavity uh, is the area where the CSF or the fluid of the brain uh, occupies in it, and then that CSF also flow down to, to your spinal cord. You know where the doctor is taking the the lump, uh, the fluid from the back. For those who are suffering from meningitis or disease that need to be diagnosed, so the doctors put a needle at the back and then try to retrieve the fluid. That's the fluid from the brain and spinal cord. Okay, so from 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 the beginning, that fluid that cavity is very big. You know? It's a one, just only lined by one cell, and then later on, it's becoming smaller, but the cell is becoming bigger and a lot forming the brain. Okay, so interesting. It's coming from the one dot and then one tube. And from that one tube, everything formed. So one, everything formed, you forget the dot, okay? So th th that's the brain physics number one. Pro um, the research that has been done on it, people know it uh, a, a bit on it. So they, they did research on the uh, uh, stem cells. Um, they grow the stem cells in the micro G. And then some studies say yes, some studies say no. But most studies, let's say, it's very, uh, the cell that come out is very, very good. 
um, you know, uh, microgravity as a unique and useful stem cell culture environment. I think they're coming from the China and Europe uh, uh, researcher um, about micro and stem cell. Um, um, I, I gave that lecture in, in US and then uh, after after a year, the NASA uh, innovated this machine, the, the micro G machine. Uh, where was it? I did this machine, the gravite. This just, uh, I think two, three years uh, ago, innovated by NASA uh, to, uh, to study whatever in micro G on Earth. Normally, when you do a micro G study, you have to go by plane, go up, and then, you know, shoot down, up, up, down, up, down by the plane, or you go to the outer space, or uh, some like a pendulum, pendulum like uh, movement uh, when you do in the labs. Uh, but the NASA uh, create this pendulum principle as well, but uh, much uh, smarter. Okay. Uh, talking back about the stem cell, uh, look here. This, uh, as, as I said before, the, the cavity that has fluid and the one cell. Uh, one, the stem cell, the, st the stem cell originate from here and then it grow outwards and form the layers of the brain, okay? Layers of the brain, that's the principle of the embryological development of the brain and the buoyancy. And interestingly, uh, talking about buoyancy, um, from my observation here, when people suffer from heat injury, the brain swollen, uh, you know, the pressure high. So the brain bunka swollen, so the, the brain has to be released or decompress, otherwise um, the, the, the blood cannot go there and then the brain be, uh, die or, or the pressure too high, then the pressure will impinge on the respiration center, breathing center, heart rate center, then the patient die, okay? So interestingly, when you remove the bone to let the brain expand, uh, if you don't put the bone back, uh, that's what normally we do, we don't, we don't put immediately, uh, we, we normally put about three, six months or even sometimes one year because of a full list. Uh, our lists are full and, and sometimes we, we, want to pre we, we, want, we want to delay to make sure there's no infection. Uh, and some uh, in, in most patients, they have these features. See, the, the, the sunken, right? And this has been reported in the surgery, blah, blah, blah. But they're talking more about medical side. Um, the, the pressure side a bit, okay, fair enough. Uh, but interesting. I think it's more than that. Uh, it's gravity against micro G. The gravity against the micro gravity, you know, differential pressure between those two, and then that differential pressure will cause a re reduction in blood flow, reduction in a brain activities, and therefore, these patients have symptoms. Uh, they have cognitive uh, cognitive impairment. So poor in judgment, poor in planning. So if this you know this this sort of patient with a brain like this walk to you, then you talk to the, to them. I don't think they. You know, uh, I don't think they 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 behave as um, you know you expect to be, because uh, of poor judgment, poor memory, and so on. So because of that effect, see. So I thought probably something you can innovate or something you can put on it for us to measure the temperature, the force, you not know, compare from compared to here to there. You know? It's a detector, something to detect what's the difference between this and there. So from there, you can make more further progress based on your, uh, you know, research. Uh, okay, related to this buoyancy, I'm gonna shift to uh, CSF, okay? Um, CSF is a brain fluid or spinal cord fluid, um, fluid that cover the brain. So if you look at the brain, there's a dura covering it, and then inside the dura is a fluid, okay? I'll show it later on the picture of the dura. Uh, interestingly, the, 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 the CSF, um, as I said before, the brain buoyant because of CSF, because of fat, but the CSF is not much and mainly produced inside here. We call it ventricle by the choroid plexus, near choroid plexus here, produce the CSF, it flow down here uh, and then flow down here, flow down here and come out. And then it's, it's cover the surface of the brain. And then some go down to the spinal cord where the doctor take the, the fluid from the from the back to diagnose the, the disease. Uh, you see the circulation here, but interesting, it's, it's physics there as well. It's a swelling vortex. The movement of the CSF is vortex. The movement of the CSF is, what I say, pulsation according to the heart rate, heartbeat. Everything is physics principle. Let's have a look. Okay, uh, here, you see the lateral ventricle. As I said before, produce, uh, CSF produces the lateral ventricle, some in the third ventricle, some in the fourth ventricle, they flow out down uh, through the aqueduct here, this is called aqueduct here, the fourth ventricle here, 
the Sisna Magna here. That's the name, medical name. Just only the name. You can read is a Sisna Magna here. And then it flowed down and around the surface of the brain. Okay. Another thing that probably I, I like to mention here, the CSF also probably be, uh, act like a cooling, a cooling system, a coolant for the brain. Okay. It's not just only protective. Hello? Hello? Uh, okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Not sure what happened. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, uh, when, when, you, when you see on the MRI here, you can see the, 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 the I'm talking about the whitish one, the, the CSF, the brain fluid there. Okay. So if too much uh, fluid, too much whitish color one, something, something abnormal happened. Okay. Uh, we call it hydrocephalus. Okay, here, um, the brain volume, uh, the parenchyma or the tissue about 1,400 mL. But the CSF, the brain fluid, is about 150 mL. This has been measured by the Cambridge group. What I say during the physics, uh, 150 mL. Um, CSF in the ventricle, about 25 mL. In the subarachnoid space, I mean around the surface of the brain, just now it's a 100 mL. Uh, in the spinal, in, in, in the spinal cord down column, spinal cord down here, about 25 mL. Two, third ventricle, fourth ventricle around here, third and fourth, so minimal about two, three mils. But it's a dynamic of flow there, okay? Um, the interesting is the brain blood volume is about 150 mils as well. Brain blood volume, okay? So I just give a fact. But uh, interesting uh, come, uh, paper lately came out. The, the, the CSF moving as a swelling vor vortex. Uh, vortex. For well, you probably understand better than me what is vortex. Uh, uh, CSF. Um, as a swelling vortex so uh, they noticed uh, according to the mri based study uh, and according to the algorithm okay uh, there's a vortex uh, flow of the csf and then they thought uh, this vortex movement reverse when you are in deep sleep uh, something interesting okay um and and one thing uh, another paper say the movement of the CSF is a you know vortex and corkscrew like motion this another paper come up saying so uh, we're talking about Vortec, uh, which I think uh, I'm in interested in it as well, because it's much related to the brain, the Vortec about the brain energy, electromagnetic wave, and so on. I noticed about Vortec, uh, it's not only in CSF, but probably in the blood and also in the electromagnetic wave. Um, one of these papers from the Physic, I think Physic Journal, uh, they say about the Vortec produce the peeling off energy. Uh, which is stable, uh, but uh, if it's not swelling, if it's not vortex, uh, is it azimut azimutal wave? Azimutal wave, then it's not stable. It easily breaks. Uh, structure, ring structure, certainly breaks. So probably it's not good for the flow of something. So it must be following the vortex principle. So the traveling distance of a vortex ring can be extended using the swelling flow rather than the azimuth wave. So that's one of the paper I, I, I read through but I not really fully understand because it's a physics journal but uh, something relate, relate to it I think uh, this the paper that they do in this the uh, laboratory simulation I think um, for you all laboratory simulation is important uh, in Germany they all start this uh, laboratory, uh, phys physics laboratory simulation for brain so they simulate that brain here the ventricle here the spinal cord here, so they try to simulate. This, this probably can be guided by the, uh, by us, by uh, you know, medical. Um, but they measure the pressure, resistance, uh, why not? Okay, this again the laboratory, laboratory simulation. Um, and one thing about this, uh, uh, probably yeah, uh, this uh, CSF and uh, blood. You see the blue one is a blood venous blood and csf just now something to do with the cooling of the brain so if you want to do study more probably you need to model it model it or simulate it with a skin fat scar layer for the outer one meningia dura this is a meningia this the one i want to show is a dura or meningia below the dura is a, a thinnest one uh arachnoid pi that one thinnest but the dura is a thickest one the doctor have to 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 cut with a knife with the dura one so when you open the dura you can see the brain so uh, before open the dura, you cannot see the brain. Okay, so there's a protective layer as well as the dura there. So manage the dura layer if you want to do if you want to do modeling, uh, model modeling. So sub arachnoid ventricular CSF space. I'm talking about CSF space just now. Okay, but uh, that 
consists of brain water, but inside it also got uh, blood vessels inside it. Okay, arteries, veins travel through and through the CSS space. They, they always interact between fluid and blood there. Uh, if the blood pulsating, the, the, the fluid also goes uh, in certain direction. So that's what I said just now. CSF flow, probably vortex, probably to do with the pulsation as well. So combination of many force. Um, modeling brain and then deeper you want to model it, probably blood supply and then vein and the skull or air sinuses. This is interesting. Air sinuses, people start to explore it. You know, the air sinuses, when you suffer from running nose uh, you know your uh, you, you 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 bursting you know your running nose and then uh, this air, air compartment here this here inside here people now just uh, realize probably is something is beyond than uh, air movement is beyond than uh, talking is beyond than uh, phonation to produce the, the the language or articulation um, but it's to cool the brain Cooling the brain as well. It's like close to the base of the brain. Air sinuses. Okay. That's one thing. Um, if you look at the picture here, it's inside here at the base. Remove the brain. Yeah, this is the base of the brain. Okay. Something close by, nearby is the air sinuses. And you see that uh, there's a brain there. Okay. Um, another interesting, uh, I noticed uh, brains uh, has a talk. Talk, uh, right hemisphere uh, talk to the opposite side. Uh, this has been uh, aware by few people, um, not many, but uh, they notice a, you know, a, a talk present for the brain. I wonder why, uh, why there's a talk present. So I, I look into the physics of book and literature in the Google, what is, what is talk and so on. Okay. So something to do with the imbalance force or movement of the force from there from A to B, that's causing talk. So the, the talk happened from A to B, is that because of the buoyancy? Or is it because of the energy electromagnetic wave that higher in, in, in this hemisphere compared to this hemisphere? That's something to probably need to do research on it. The, the, the total energy here, bigger than the total energy here, probably the top present, electromagnetic wave energy I'm talking on. Okay. Interestingly, when you look at the earth, also talk, okay, and the brain also talk. Uh, that's brain and earth. Uh, I show you later on the slide. Always uh, has some relationship, I think. And this is the talk. One paper come out about uh, talk. Okay, shift or talk happen inside the brain. And then when I st study for physics, I look at this. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's right or wrong. When they say here, brain. Uh, what here? When electrical current passes through the magnetic field, the torque is present. It's very much related to the to the brain wave. You know, electrical current passes through the magnetic field, torque is present. So electric always has magnet, magnet always has electric. So something to do with the brain wave. Probably the brain wave in the right hemisphere is not same as the brain wave in the left hemisphere. The energy total for both is are not equal. Uh, maybe or maybe because of buoyancy or maybe because of those combination. Maybe. Uh, maybe that principle, which I uh, okay. Um, okay, related to the um, buoyancy, uh, CSF. I move now to the related topic is the uh, intracranial pressure. Okay, as I said before, you have brain tissue, blah blah blah, and then uh, pressure. Of course, there's a pressure inside uh, the cranium. And as I said before, they suffer from heat injury. Uh, then they have contusion, you have blood, you know, blood clot inside the brain. So this will add the volume inside the cranium. Because of added volume, you have added pressure. Once you have too much pressure, then cause herniation or reduce blood supply, you know, uh, further damage to the brain and patient die. So intracranial pressure is one of the parameters which is very important. Very important and most neurosurgeon, most doctors rely on it. Uh, why? Because we don't know much others, but we know a bit on uh, pressure, internal pressure. Why? So, because we can measure it. There's a probe, uh, innovation made by the scientists. There's a probe put inside, then we can measure the pressure. So, people say the pressure for the uh, baby is different. Let's say about 5 millimeter mercury. For adult uh, like me, it's about 20 millimeter mercury. But if beyond 25 millimeter mercury, you are in danger. Okay? So, uh, there's a cut of values uh, for the doctors to consider. Here is one of a picture of our study here um, on, on intracranial pressure and brain cooling. 
Okay. Uh, as I said before, how to measure the blood pressure, uh, how to measure the intracranial pressure, the cranial pressure. Uh, as I said, uh, the common, the gold standard one is this one. It's going down to the ventricle. We call it intraventricular ICP monitoring. ICP stand for stand for intracranial pressure. Okay. Um, and and people also measure uh, here, as I said, the surface of the brain. So we call it subarachnoid because of below the below the subarachnoid and inside the CSF. So we call it uh, subarachnoid space. That means below the dura layer, the thick dura, uh, and outside the dura we call it epidura uh, monitoring. If inside the parenchyma, probe put it inside here, we call it intraparenchyma monitoring. Okay. So, um, this is um, not direct, indirect measure of the pressure by Doppler, by uh, infrared, okay? But the direct one, that one. So connect to the system, then we get the reading, the pressure up and down, wave up and down. So this is an example that we have here in, in our center, in everywhere. So you have pressure like uh, ICP24, which is borderline, and the, the wave is flattened. Uh, it's not good, huh? So this patient got some sort of raised ICP, we need to manage it with medication and so on, okay? And the study shows, as I said before, the pressure correlates with the volume. Once the volume is added to the closed compartment, you know, remember, skull inside the closed compartment, darkness inside it, not much light. So you added the volume, blood clot, um, brain edema, more water in it. Um, blood, uh, you know, more blood clot, then you have high pressure. So it's correlated like this. It, it's not linear, but it's a parabolic like um, uh, uh, correlation. So with added volume, and then you have raise, very quick raise in ICP at certain volume. Okay. At certain volume, it's go very fast. Um, so we call it compliant curve. Okay. And then, um, Okay, uh, as I said before, if pressure high, then the, the blood will be reduced because it, it will impinge by the pressure. So the blood from the heart will not go inside the cranium. Uh, uh, so we have uh, reduced blood flow and then we have ischemia. We have later on, if, if, if prolonged enough, long enough, the brain get infected, uh, dead. The brain tissue get uh, die. You know? uh, when you look at the blood, that's interesting. This is a... Um, uh, MRI based uh, uh, modeling uh, of the blood uh, in, um, supplies for the brain. Oh, beautiful um, shapes, uh, so crowded. Okay, uh, this another graph shows the relationship relationship between the blood flow and the intracranial pressure. Okay, uh, uh, the graph show here if the blood flow reduce is going to zero towards zero, okay, towards zero, then something uh, pressure is going up. For, for I'm talking here. So at this point, uh, where the, the, the brain is not compensated, where the brain uh, uh, tired of or exhausted of their compensatory mechanism, then um, a problem happen. Problems start to happen, okay? The pressure going up, going up further, and then the blood flow will be reduced. That's the relationship between the blood flow and pressure. People have drawn it. This is my, my, my picture published. Um, Oh yeah, talking about the buoyancy and ICP, um, uh, probably if you close the brain, uh, you, you measure the ICP in the closed compartment, the best is inside the, inside the CSF, in intraventricle. But when you open it, surgeon or open the skull, remove the tumor, and then some surgeon put the intracranial pressure probe in the not space, outer space, on the surface, which I think is not good. Uh, because of the G force and the micro G has been obliterated, so the relationship uh, is not, it's not, it's not uh, ap optimal anymore. But if you put it in the intraventricular, maybe give some sort of value, uh, maybe can help the doctors. But if you measure the 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 the, the system or something, not ICP, uh, it's not same as when you when you measure it when 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 the skull is still not open. And then another scenario that we've I, I noticed um, the the movement of the brain when the pressure is too high is faster going upwards. Is that something to do with the buoyancy? Uh, compare when when the shift going downward. Okay, that's something I think to do with the buoyancy. Okay, next next uh, brain physics too. If I still got time, if not got time, uh, yeah, still still early, right? Yes, yes, can continue, bro. 
sampai ya, buat pun. Ya, kan cukup. Pukul 12, bro. Oh, pukul 12, ya. Yeah. Kalau yeah. kalau tak cukup, kita buat dua. Tengok macam ni, <laughs> okay. Boleh, so, boleh, bro. Ya, yeah. yeah, brain physics number two. Um, I notice um, uh, the shape of the brain, the architecture of the brain is interesting. Uh, on the MRI, you know, I, I, and then from there, I study the infinite books. Uh, there's a book published by blah, 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 uh, talking about the infinity books, uh, infinity shapes. And I, I find that most of the shape of the brain inside a uh, nucleus, even the whole brain is an infinity shape. Um, the thalamus, the hypothalamus, hippocampus, caudate nucleus. Uh, this is the book that I went through. Uh, so something with, uh, you know, uh, infinity shape. Um, yeah, talking about infinity, you all know more than me. Everything is infinity. Every, infinity is everything. There's a bit, uh, a bit deep. Uh, the uh, meaning every infinity is everything everything is infinity uh, golden ratio all the stuff huh? zero divided by zero okay but the shape here is a dual spiral shape um it's a dual spiral shape it, it, it appears to be happen in the brain as well i show it later on the caudic nucleus uh, here the caudic nucleus it's a dual spiral something like this and um, um, here what the this one the lemniscate the thalamus, connect right and left uh, thalamus. Here, the hippocampus, if you go, you dissect deeper, the hippocampus to do with the memory is this one. The fermat spiral uh, for the memory, the hippocampus. If you go, the whole brain is a, uh, you know, uh, it's a um, ball like, uh, people call it the infinity shape as so, well, infinite shape. Um, even at the cortex, at the cortex, the, the cortex, I mean the surface of the brain, uh, uh, he has uh, about three millimeter thickness. Uh, uh, we call it cortex, the out, uh, the, the where where the neurons lie, three millimeter only. But I think I think full of physics inside it. Okay, below three millimeters are the axon or the pathway or the track that connect between A and B and C. It's a pathway. Okay. But the cortex is on the surface, the three millimeters cover the, 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 the cells. Okay? A lot of brain activities there. Uh, below the three millimeters are the network, uh, are, are the pathway, pathway, the axon, this one. Huh? This one, the axon. Okay? If you go deep inside, then you have deep nuclei. Deep nuclei is like a cortex, but it's bigger. Cortex, it's like three millimeters, but deep inside is a thalamus, hypothalamus, all this, deep nuclei. But they, they have all uh, neurons, um, the, 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 the cell um, part is inside the nucleus, okay? The pathway here is in the white matter, okay? Uh, the pathway is in the white matter of the brain. So brain has gray matter and white matter. The gray matter is the cortex or the nucleus, the deep nucleus. The white matter is the tract, okay? If I go back to MRI, I have to mention the MRI image. Yeah. So, so the track is lying here. Probably not good here. Uh, I show it later on. Maybe I look at the brain image. Uh, this, uh, uh, this one. Okay. The track is here. Something here. Uh, the track. But the surface is the gray matters. The gray matters. So, probably. Okay, okay. Uh, back to where we are. Um, where are we? Uh, okay, uh, I think something, um, you know, the architecture is uh, like that, I think because of the strength, because of the uh, energy, you know, the optimal energy, the best energy is like that. Uh, or, you know, or beyond that um, swirling water and so on. Something to do with the infinity shape, the bridging, and the insula structure. Here we call it insula cortex. It's, it's like pyramid, uh, pyramid shape. This insula cortex, uh, also interesting part of the brain, to do with the respiration, uh, bowel movement, and so on. Okay, this is the one that I show you just now, the the caudate nucleus, uh, the, the dual spiral like the fib following the Fibonacci, Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so all infinite. Uh, 
I think the brainstem as well. Brainstem is beautiful infinity. This is something that's a brainstem, the, the area here. This, this is my hypothesis. Uh. I got a picture somewhere, but I think the brainstem is, I think the, 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 the architecture of it is very beautiful. Um, okay, people study the, the network. As I said before, people pre represent the brain uh, as a ball like this. So they cut it into ball like this, right hemisphere, left hemisphere, and then they study the connectivity, the, the movement of the brain wave, the EEG, you know, the movement of the brain wave from there to there. So they make a network algorithm with different colors. Um, uh, brain and the music in great shape. Yeah, okay. Um, so what I'm trying to say here, um, people always focus on here. Uh, energy of the brain is an electromagnetic wave. Uh, the EEG, when you put the EEG on the scalp, you, you detect the brain wave up and down, up and down. The energy up and down is energy. If you go to the ocean, it's up and up and down. Everything is up and down is energy. Uh, no life, no energy. And so brain physiology and chemistry and with brain wave. Okay, this we regard as physiological energy. And this one, the brain, uh, is anatomy. And people, we like we just study the anatomy. What is what is that? What is that? What is that? But I think the anatomy itself is energy. I think you all know, right? Because particle can be wave, wave can be particle duality, yeah? particle wave duality. So that's come the quantum. I talked later on. So I, I think the anatomy, the anatomy itself is energy. So I call it anatomical energy. So I'm gonna publish this this paper uh, in the journal soon. Um, and I, I and my brother-in-law showed this book, I think from somebody, uh, Malim Ghazali, I think from one of us here. And then he studied the, when, when you read something, uh, you know, and then they study the wave, up and down wave, then try to shape it, uh, shape the wave. How, how does it, how, how, how the shape like, okay. Um, um, and then this guy, or probably, we're not here. Let me show it. Okay. Um, okay. When the wave combine, also come up with a shape. So I think this shape is something interesting as well. The two wave combine. They, they, they form a shape. If you can make an algorithm, you make it a shape. It's, I think it must be flower come out or something like that. Okay. So why uh, the, the question? Why why this um, infinite shape? Ah, then you you all know infinite architecture must be something maybe stronger, the strongest, the best shape or the best for energy flow, you know. <clears throat> and I just read uh, a couple of months ago something from Germany tried to make a, a quantum detector. They, they try to innovate something to try to, to try to detect the smallest energy. They call it quantum quantum detector. Okay, just come up. Um, Okay, this architecture of the brain, when you zoom inside the brain stem, as I said before, the buoyant, the bending, is some angle here. Okay, uh, all this bending, all this measurement, architecture me measurement, artists uh, must be a purpose in it. Uh, same with the talk, must be a purpose in it, yeah? brain talk. Um, so probably if you study in patient with autism, patient with uh, psychosis, schizophrenia, you know, uh, behave like uh, Gila, orang Gila. Uh -huh. So uh, crazy, or you thought you know, this guy is crazy, but if you look at the brain, maybe imbalance in the energy, asymmetry of the energy is, is beyond normal person. Maybe the talk is, the, the talk angle is much higher. Maybe, all this maybe, maybe. So brain is a hypothesis which needs to be tested. Um, I need to attempt the share content. Approve. Osman is going to annotate the shared content. Okay, okay, approve. Okay, brain physics number three. Hello, can move on? Oh, you all, you all <laughs> blurred. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Something came up here. Yeah, what's this? I, 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 I don't know about annotation. Uh, oh, from there, there, just reject it. Just reject. I think someone just maybe uh, accidentally. Oh, okay, okay. 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 So um, next, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, brain physics three about the light. Yeah, the skull and the light. Yeah. 
So as I said before, it's inside the skull, thick skull. So most of the doctors say, oh, because the skull there, the bone there, is to protect from uh, outside force. If you've been hit by your friends, you, you fight with your friends, then your friend hit on the skull, then the, your brain being protected. But I think it's beyond than that. Uh, it's protected not by the um, uh, force, but also from, from the light force as well, or some other force, okay? Uh, of course, there's a hole inside the uh, skull for nerve to pass through, uh, for the, all the information to pass through, for all the universe information energy to pass through the brain. So, so all the biggest energy concentrated into the smallest energy inside your brain. So your universe into your uh, brain. Uh, but uh, in real fact, it's covered by skull and it's dark inside. And the question is, darkness matters. Yes, I think so, darkness matters. Okay, why I say so? As I said just now, if you open the skull, the gravity force came in, um, obliterate the, high, high, the microgravity. And then I noticed uh, that patient, uh, when being exposed to the sun, and that patient complaining of headache, severe headache, uh, cannot tolerate the, shun, the, the, the sun, the sunlight. Okay, so that, that must, must be some amount of light, but not too much. Okay, if too much, then you've got problems. Uh, same when you playing when your kids playing uh, now your gadget computers and stay up too long at night three o'clock in the morning it's supposed to it's time for you to sleep but you don't sleep then you start having headache the next morning uh, you behave abnormally because of too much light and the light goes through the pineal gland I showed just now the the man became the boy became man woman, girl became woman. So the light going from there, there, and it pass to the pineal gland, and from there it secretes something, the, the chemical, and then can, can cause migraine or headache because of too much light. Okay, too much light also not good. Uh, now, yeah, here the picture, yeah, too much light. It's going to the pineal gland, and then it reflect going to down here, and then it secretes the melatonin uh, hormone, which is too much, and then can cause headache. Um, but light also can be helpful especially in disease. A uh, study done in Toronto, in Canada, um, uh, uh, one or two groups studied the light uh, therapy. Uh, okay, so they call it laser acupuncture. Uh, uh, laser acupuncture use, using light on the brain, so you, they give light. Okay, so they found out um, chemically it increased glutamate hormone, which is a uh, glutamate chemical, which is good, uh, increased lymphatic drainage, reduce edema, increase blood flow, all the stuff. Huh? anti apoptosis that means reduce uh, that of the brain cell, huh? the study done on it. So maybe they combine the physicists, combine with the doctors, and, and combine with the hit, uh, histopathologists to look at the chemical and so on. As I said, light can be good. In US recently, they did this uh, therapy. They give the light onto the body. In fact, not the whole brain only, not on, on the face, but the whole body to make it young again, probably. Make it look younger. Huh? Um, with the right exposure of the light, probably for them in the area where not enough light, probably need to expose to light. But we here have enough light. Uh, but of course, certain light need to be studied whether it's good for the whole body or not. Okay. Here, another study shows uh, light uh, direct onto the skull to see how eager they are uh, to see how the brain behave when the when certain type of light shine onto the skull. Uh, but again, you have to study the penetration here because of the skull, because of the skin and so on. How much that energy been been absorbed into the brain? Ah, uh, exactly, okay. Prof. My question, baru nak tanya. Yeah. I mean, like the 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 skin as well as the actual skull is a barrier in itself, kind. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I I got the the study here. Um, I show it here. Ah, here. I, I got somewhere from the study, they did a study, they measure all this, how much go in, how much, uh, you know, if you can read here, light and scar. Okay. Like, yeah, something, you know, uh, some some group has done the study, how much, they, uh, how much, you know, go inside the brain. You, you can have a look at, the, at that paper. But uh, going back, um, yeah, uh, the study done based, uh, based on the visible light. Okay, uh, they use a visible light, the, 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 I think the green or the red one. Okay, um, they, they prefer on this side, the near infrared side, uh, not the blue, the, 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 the violent side, the, the infrared side. So the higher one, the blue one tend to damage things, it's good to, for, for cancer therapy. 
but for the right one uh, for this opposite side probably good for to heal certain condition not tumor like disease uh, the study by that paper shape says a light so what uh, 600 to 900 mil 918 nanometers eh? uh, the lower the frequency the energy and blah 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 so they prefer the spectrum here they, they use a visible light um, and then from my literature review saying also there's a they, 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 you can divide the light into two uh, spectrum light um, one spectrum good for the physical uh, body physical fitness and the other one is a emotional fitness uh, for red for scarlet good for emotion more like metaphysical thing you know metaphysical yeah i think science now going to metaphysical philosophical as well because of the quantum physics and so on and these are physical uh, stuff good for the yellow blue uh, so i think you can look in the google uh, they have this come up in the google uh, this color good for this this color good for this okay um oh, again shows the the spectrum the wavelength and increase atp increase the energy and so on okay um that's why i'm thinking light maybe good for 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 brain probably you can do light therapy for this type of patient so probably can create a room where there's a light for this uh for this patient huh? maybe the patient lie in that in that room uh and they study the the brain wave light okay uh it's like rehabilitation uh, uh, re rehab uh, rehabilitation yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Prof, uh, just, just wondering because my my study is, is really related to laser and cells so i've done it um laser and blood therapy as um, so my next FRGS grant is about laser and Alzheimer disease. So that's what Prof. Jaffe maybe have informed you as well. Um, uh -huh. so just, I'm just wondering if let's say that we we are going to go into like a clinical, because um, what I'm I doing now is, is, is mainly like the in vitro, or even if you go with in vivo, we will just like, we will use mice or any other animals. Um, is there any possibility that if let's say that we're going to apply this clinically, um, is, is it like possible for us to to go into that um how how we actually maybe create that chance uh, to to yeah, yeah 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 you, you must remember because, because laser, laser, that, yeah. yeah okay yeah i think uh, laser is a focus energy right it's a focus uh light uh, yes it's a focus yeah you can study in in, in vitro but when you do, when you study uh in real human the energy is focused. Then that means um, you want to target certain area of the brain. So that energy, laser energy, is it to make the brain cell die or is it to make the brain cell enhance? So you can actually, brain... yeah. It, it depend. It depends on, um, like you said just now, the wavelength and also the the energy. So if you use like a high power energy, so of course it will actually damage the brain. So what oh, I'm using my research ah. is you level laser we are not using the high power ah, ah, we are just using a low ah, level laser ah. yeah. so it's so, so, so you can play you can play around with the energy right yes yes we can so what i did uh, with the atp measurement i did it in in neuroscience department oh, that's that's interesting that's interesting that, yeah. that's good that if you that's not destroy good. the cell the brain cell then that, that's good no we we, we uh, actually wow. managed to get uh, like a therapeutic effects coming from from there yeah. yeah 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 so in the future you want to do it on human then probably you can make it like uh, the light is not focused uh the laser light is distributed widely then you can give it to the frontal lobe you know front of the brain um you know what prof is saying uh. Akina, is that you have to divert the light that you can yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like... yes yes mm -hmm. uh, so uh, instead of so... just like you so you need to have actually like few more lah actually because it's a low level laser so just one 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 light itself maybe tak cukup lah so you need like to have more yeah your your vitro study okay your vitro study you need yeah, a vitro, vitro study is okay yeah so we didn't go with the in vivo yet so now still focusing on in vivo yeah so probably you can modify it later on your laser energy to make it diffuse so that when applied to the brain it's not focused so by diffuse i mean the energy is scattered then you can see more um you you, you can do the study i mean less less uh invasive like, i think <laughs> so yes. just like here just like yes, the picture yes. here uh, uh, diffuse yes. like yeah uh. yes 
uh, unless your study shows that by focusing it, the energy is low, then it's, it doesn't cause that of the brain cell, then it's okay. Uh, ethic, yeah, the ethic behind it. But I think uh, it, it's a good thing to do. Carry on. So, yep. Move. Okay. Yes, bro. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, just like I said, uh, study done before they use this multiple uh, uh, probe light. Yeah? They, they shoot onto the brain area. So using the good, uh, you know, the, hand, the headphone light. So this one. Uh, but uh, I, I wonder why, why it's not been, uh, you know, uh, been accepted by people. I probably just started. People just started doing the research on it. Okay, uh, this is my study. Um, uh, when I open the skull, when I put the grid onto direct onto the brain, you can see the picture there. This is a, this is a gold standard when you put the grid direct onto the brain. And I ask the, the patient to look at the colors, uh, the brain wave change, something to do with the light, I think. So that's uh, different because I opened the skull. So, um, this, this is the slide showing what you asked just now uh, about that penetration and so on. You know, you can read that on if you want my slide. Uh, there's a paper on it. Uh, um, this uh, slide shows uh, difference between blind person and healthy non-blind person. This is an MEG wave. Uh, our, we have MEG, but now not functioning. Um, so this uh, blind person wave, it is a healthy person wave. You see the compensation happened in the hearing. Uh, right temporal, left temporal. So the blind person has higher energy in the ear, higher energy in the sensation, touch, uh, compared to the healthy person. That's why they, they, the brain compensate, compensate for the uh, deficit, for the weakness. Always compensatory mechanism happen. Okay, next, uh, brain physics four, um, brain temp, brain and, and its temperature. This, this is my interest. Um, Temperature correlates with the pressure and so on. Okay. Uh, the study shows the temperature of the brain higher at the center. We call it core compared to the periphery. And the, the difference is not much. That means the brain temperature has been under tight control. Okay. And this tight control is very important. Under tight control. Even 0 0.5 degree shift can cause a disease. Oh, huh? The core is higher. And the temperature of the brain has mainly been produced by the metabolism of the cell, neuron cell. They produce the ATP energy, water, and this ATP produces the heat. And if you do mathematic calculation, then the energy higher, then you, you, you notice that your brain becomes hot and you're feeling hot. You want to go somewhere and you want to have a, a shower. You want to put the, the water onto your skull or use your scalp. Huh? So this um, uh, energy, the, the heat being produced, produce the temperature, high temperature. How, how, how the, uh, the brain remove or the skull remove the high temperature? By convection, I think. So as I said before, the air sinuses, the venous, the blood, uh, all this do with the thermodynamics. Um, yeah, this is what I mentioned just now, the injury. So the study show all the study shows that the brain metabolism metabolism is higher, and because of that, brain temperature should be higher. And this this is my my thinking. I, I always think when I, I think that I write on a piece of paper. So uh, normal state metabolism, and then you have a uh, heat being produced, and you have high temperature. But in heat injury, HI is a heat injury. You have increased metabolism. We call it hyperemia. Uh, increased metabolism, therefore increased blood flow. So hyperemia, then you increase heat. And then therefore increase temperature uh, but at the end of the uh, increased pressure or increase uh, heat uh, the re the reverse can happen that means the patient is not is not doing well the temperature drop uh, that's why in my study some of them they have uh, lower yeah? the, the temperature is lower much lower that that's a grave sign it's not a good sign look at the picture here uh, the center of the brain is higher compared to the surface of the cortex Study been done, confirm on it. And then, um, yeah, talking about the entropy, um, ordered system. So, so the, the changes, slight changes in the brain temperature uh, will cause disorder. Huh? So this uh, tight control to make sure the low entropy system be maintained. 
inside the brain and the ordered system. So you, you can easily get disordered because of your thinking, because of your mathematical calculation, because of you watching the TV. So we can disorder. And then it becoming the ordered again. So the, the high entropy always produce low entropy as a circle uh, because of this tight control. And one thing about the core of the brain, um, higher temperature, but the core itself is, has been taught by a neuroscientist as the source of the brainwave. So one study done a long time ago, when you when you cut here, cut here, shows that the brainwave originate from the deep part of the of the brain, uh, the, the brainstem, thalamus, hypothalamus. So the brainwave coming from there, so it spread outwards to the surface. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, people debate it whether it's true or not, but people debate it. But I think uh, this deep nucleus, I think, is very interesting area. And if you inject the deep nucleus, you you are you are in coma. You are comatose, okay? If you inject the surface a bit here, you're not comatose. But if you inject the whole, more than 70% of the cortex, you tend to be comatose. But if you inject a small area here inside the brainstem or the thal thalamus or hypothalamus, then you likely get uh, comatose, okay? So since the center of the brain is the crucial one, it's the most complicated one, most interesting one, okay? Um, yeah, talking about this, uh, people interested in this about the soul and then, you know, the, the brainwave has been noted, come out, uh, detected on 14 days. That's interesting. Okay, the origin of the brainwave, uh, this uh, uh, this two guy published papers in 1949, um, originated from the center of the brain. And then the subsequent studies label this area as greater limbic system. The limbic system is the system that very interesting for the brain. If you study the brain, the, the limbic system chapter is very interesting because it deals with your uh, behavior, with your uh, memory, uh, with your attitude and so on, the, 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 the limbic one. The movement motor cortex is a movement. Uh, movement. You move right hand, left hand, but your higher uh, intellectual or who am I question is the limbic one, uh, the center of the brain. Okay. Uh, even uh, the philosophies, philosophers like Socrates before saying that this, the deep part of the brain is the area that deal with uh, the sick of the soul. Uh, I think they refer to the area that deals with life, life and death. Soul cannot be met because it's a metaphysical, okay? <laughs> something metaphysical. So, but I think they refer to something that if you in, uh, if you inject this area, then you die. You tend to die. T talking about life and death, okay? Talking about brain, interesting. I, I mentioned now. Uh, compare with the heart. Uh, heart produce up and down. Uh, blood pressure, heart rate. It's up and down energy, okay? This blood pressure, heart rate of the heart can be supported by machine, okay? Human map machine, human creation, ventilators, okay? Uh, the up and down for the brain is the brain wave. And they are infinite, I think. They are infinity. The brain wave is up and down energy. If you die, the brain wave is flat. And then who can make the brain wave re-emerge, I think can make the dead person become alive again. So there's no innovation yet can make the brainwave re-emerge. If you can do so, I think you can make the dead person become alive. So that's why you have two types of death. Um, we call it cardiac death or cardiopulmonary death, uh, heart and lung death, or people uh, layman death, orang biasa panggil mati, or another one is a brain death. Brain death uh, is the ultimate death, I think. If you got injured heart, then at the end, the brain's dead. But if you injure the, the brain, you have brain death, it's the death. It's the ultimate death. <coughs> then people query whether the heart is superior than the brain or brain superior than the heart. But I think they are interrelated, huh? brain and heart. Uh, <coughs> here, the Leonardo da Vinci used the infinity ratio, the Fibonacci ratio, the golden ratio. <coughs> it crossed uh, with, the algo, uh, with the line and so on. They say the seat of the soul is at the center here, the, the, the deep part of the brain. Uh, so the argument, the debate going on on it, but I think so you cannot map on so because it's metaphysical, but I think they refer to something that determines life and death. <clears throat> and combine all, um, uh, the deep part of the brain produce brain wave, brain waves determine the function and the buoyancy, the bending. So you can see this area is very interesting. Yeah? The bending, the suju position. And we are talking about uh, brain temperature. Uh, people also focus on the body temperature, which uh, also can be divided into core and free-free. 
okay, the core inside the organs and the free free on the skin. Okay. Um, brain temperature. Okay. Um, oh, this one my study, but just uh, one week ago been published <laughs> in, in, in US about uh, brain cooling. Um, about the four trauma heat inject pressure. This is a cooling. We give a, a, a cooling uh, fluid to the inject brain and we found, we found a positive effect. And um, oh yeah, this uh, the study done. We decompress, remove the scar because of the high pressure in the head injury, and then at the same time we give fluid, the cooling fluid, about thirty two degrees. Uh, the study shown that thirty two degrees, thirty two degrees is the best. Combined with engineer in USM, we create, uh, you know, innovate a machine that can maintain temperature at thirty two degree, uh, irrigation of the fluid, uh, by uh, Doctor Professor Asrul Nizam, said that said that group. Um, yeah, uh, talking about this flow, I said just now about the vortex, uh, CSF vortex, but the vortex also happened at the surface of the, of the brain, three millimeter cortex, uh, the gray matters, the vortex of the brain wave, of the energy, of the wave movement, is like vortex, it's shaped like infinite light shape, from the three millimeter below going up to the surface, okay? So there's a, a flood, heat flood from the hot to the cold. So if you have hot, hot, then it's not good. Uh, if if the area surface is, is hot, there's no gradient, there's, there's no energy flow, then you, you have disease, you have problem. Must be convection somewhere. Oh, this is the guy. Okay. Uh, this my study shows that when you started cooling, the brain wave change, huh? the energy reduce. Same. Uh, we have so software here to analyze the brain wave. Uh, when one was notice here, the brain with a coherent, coherent superposition, it's all, all quantum. Okay, back to the brain physics five. Um, brain with cortical brain wave and vortex or avalanche. Okay, so, so now focus on the three millimeter cortex, this area here. Uh, this, this is the white matter, the track, the edge zone. This is the um, new, neuron glia, neuron cells, huh? the the neuron cell line here, but the, the, the exon line down here forming, forming the track, the connect, the connectivity, the net uh, connect from A to B through the exon. Okay. But the gray matter is the where the activities most happen. This is the nucleus also appear like gray matter, you know. Uh, uh, this area, thalamus, hypothalamus, brain stem here. This is a deep nuclei. This is the insula cortex. Okay. So um this area, three millimeter cortex, I think full of physics as well. Full of physics. And one paper only in the world came out in Japan long time ago. I think 1972 papers talking about it and then vanished. And <laughs> I look at that paper that it's uh, interesting. This three millimeter cortex, um, if you look histologically, uh, according to the medicine, so you have this layers one, two, three, four layers because of the cell, you know, the cell lining like this. And below it, just only the edge zone. Edge zone is a connection from the cell down. Yes, you have six layers, and people call it some people call it seven layers. If combined with the thalamus, it's got seven layers. So this uh, histology features again, again, the design is 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 beautiful, and this again show you the architecture, the drawing by the sci scientists and artists. The Kajal, Kajal is a scientist uh, about that cortex, beautiful. It's like a tree, behave like a tree. And then I showed just now the movement of the wave at the cortex. Um, it's vortex like vortex in brain wave. This is a paper come out, and then and the shape of that vortex, I think it's infinite shape. That this one that I showed the movement of the brain wave is going up to the surface, and people has found there's an electron movement here it's at the surface of the brain. It's an electron movement. The Japanese group now doing that research, the quantum research for the brain. So the wave movement is is in, is like a vortex shape, infinity like vortex shape. So this movement here is going up here. Um, I put I put some electrode when I do the awake craniotomy. Patient awake, I do remove the tumor. I do put the electrode here on the surface, and then try to study here. So got some activities that were very interesting. And 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 this area. I think something to do with the vortex and beyond the vortex as well, <laughs> because of the buoyancy, combined the buoyancy. I, I noticed a picture here where you have the volcano eruption 
then you have natural buoyancy and then you have spreading of the wave. And same with the uh, that Japanese group study, they show the movement of the energy going to the side, uh, the electron movement. It's nearly like a uh, volcano-like uh, eruption. So the energy being transmitted to the uh, horizontally, you know, to the horizontal. From vertical, it's going to the horizontal, like this. Energy is going from below, 3 millimeter quarter, and it's spread right and left. It's important in epilepsy. Um, patient with epilepsy, uh, the energy, the wave is too high, and then it's spread fast to the right and left. Okay, I, I did one patient based on this uh, principle. I bust, I burn the area here, and the epilepsy is improved, a lot improved. I got just only one patient. So I want to publish that. I, I, I try to co collect more patients uh, based on this principle. This, this is what I'm thinking. Um, uh, the, the brain wave is going up there. It's oscillating, that, it's oscillating upwards based on the vortex movement, and it's going horizontal as well. Okay. People used to, medical used to say its movement is horizontal down here. That's why it cut, uh, the doctor cut deeper here. But my, my technique, no need to cut. I just bust above it. So not been published yet, okay? Um, and this uh, convection, uh, natural buoyancy is like volcano, okay? Um, and why is buoyancy like that? Why CSF, why is, this is CSF, remember it's a CSF on the surface. CSF here on the surface is cooling effect as well to cool the, the erupted volcano. And and that uh, cooling made the brain works optimally. Okay. Combination of buoyancy, vortex, eruption volcano, avalanche, uh, combination of those principles. I think that's made the brain work optimally. I think more probably more than that. Yeah? Avalanche, vortex, buoyancy, enthalpy, entropy, low entropy, all these physics physic terms. Okay, enthalpy, ent entropy, okay. Um, this is the paper that I showed, uh, Japanese paper, just only one paper in the world talking about this. Um, okay, vortex, avalanche, and volcano, I think the principle play here in the three millimeter cortex. The deeper nuclei beyond that, probably, you know, all the volcano eruption happened in the deep nuclei. Um, yeah, this, this, this picture might, I did on one patient with epilepsy. I bust only, no need to cut, just bust on the surface. Um, yeah, the, 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 the swirling vortex, uh, lately study shows it happened not only uh, there, but it happened in the visual area as well. The visual cortex, vision, to do with the perception vision. They notice the the movement also in 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 vortex like. As I said before, CSF also moves like vortex. CSF like vortex. Uh, yeah, that three millimeter cortex, as I said, uh, got CSF at the surface to cool it down. But interestingly, that three millimeter cortex also reach this blood supply. You see the blood supply here, the image of the blood supply. Then when you make an algorithm, make it architecture like, so it's shaped like latest like architecture, you know, uh, I, I, I'm unable to comprehend it. It's very interesting, uh -huh. but I think it must be a reason why this blood supply, so enriched with blood supply. And then they form, I think, I think they form a certain geometry. That geometry is very important. So architecture of the brain is the basic. So brain physics number six, brain blood flow. Okay. Uh, brain blood flow, um, as I said here, showing the blood from there, supply the brain area. It's very rich in blood supply. Then you have uh, one anterior circulation and one behind here, posterior circulation. Anterior the pump, posterior blood belakang. Uh, one front, one back. So this circulation for like uh, a connection here. We call it, we call it circle of villis. I think if you study it uh, in geometry shape, I think it must be something, uh, you know, something related to the geometry of this uh, blood, blood vessel. Okay. Uh, this is a study by the Cambridge group. They try uh, in their laboratory, they try to simulate and they measure the resistance, you know, electrical resistance as well. Uh, how to study the blood flow? One of the medical techniques now use Doppler, you know, the Doppler and, uh, wave down and then reflect by the red blood cell. The moving cell inside the blood uh, column inside the, the, the inside the arteries and then or vein they reflect back 
that principle of Doppler. So innovation most by the physicists, innovation, all innovation by physicists, guided by medical people. Um, yeah, this is the blood vessel, this is the nerve. This is the real one. This is a real blood vessel inside the brain. And this is the nerve. And th this is the CSF space. Inside here is the CSF. And you see the membrane. It's an arachnoid membrane, like, you know, the arachnoid membrane. Why the architecture is like this must be must be something interesting. Why membrane like this, septation like this, okay? This is the imaging on the MR, MRA, MR angiography, based on the imaging. The vascular system, you have diameter, then you can measure huh, the pressure and so on. So the bigger to the smaller. Uh, then you notice the uh, the pathology, the disease inside the blood vessel is any reason. If you rupture this, when you pray, you can collect and die. When you watch television, you can collect and die. You can have heart attack, same as the any reason. And reason rupture, then you can collect and die. If minimal rupture, you can have headache only. Okay, if you rupture it, then why why it happened? Because of this turbulent flow. I think when you get older, the blood vessel inside it become full of fat. Then the flow is this is not lamina anymore. I think many research done on it. Uh, many people interested in it. I think people going into this. Uh, many scientists into this. Okay, this talking about lamina flow and turbulent flow. And then. Uh, the question is how to reverse the turbulent flow to back to lamina when you get older. Um, maybe, I don't know, how to reverse it anatomically difficult to make it straight again. Uh, to maybe reduce the content, the density. Huh? Less fat or whatever you have to study the density of the of the blood. Huh? So when you get older, the, the suggested density of the blood should be like this, should be like this. When you are 20 years old, the density of the blood should be like this, should be like this. So that's the study part of it. Okay, research part of it. Um, uh, yeah, this is blood flow on the space. This is a real one. The study nowadays, they, they, they use imaging. They use the dye where the doctor inject into the blood vessel. Then that dye, fluorescent dye, appear brighter. Then the doctor can recognize the blood vessel, uh, you know, uh, clearly, uh, well. Uh, that's one thing, the new innovation about the fluorescent and the dye injected inside the, inside the body. Blood vessel. Okay. Um, one thing I would like to do this about the blood vessel is about the, is this innovation here. I don't know whether got on it or not. Somebody inno should innovate, and then we all can use this innovate as a temperature measurement. It's a tip here, thermocouple probe maybe, just for us to measure the temperature next here, temperature next here, temperature here. So I think that temperature is very important. And, and normally we do have a system like this from Germany. We have to go through and through, uh, 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 you know, uh, make a puncture like this. But for us, uh, for surgeons, sometimes this temperature probe like this can be useful. And nobody innovate it. I, 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 I don't know can, whether it can get by from the uh, vendors or not. But something interesting, I, something that I would like to have. <laughs> the temperature measurement, the thermocouple probe for, for me. A, a prop, um, sure, because yeah. I'm using it for my research. The thermocouple, I think, is is very easy to get. <laughs> but but maybe for your application, you you will need something that more accurate. Uh, but for, we for do have it in, in our like, yeah, it it's uh -huh. in like metal, so you can just like I believe that you can actually sterilize it. Yeah. We, we bullet, bullet. It. Oh, can can, can sterilize it? Yeah, I, I think so. Can yeah. Oh, we but can talk also, after because, this. because it's in because it's in metal. Yeah. Uh, I can talk to you after this. Yeah. Or probably we can innovate, make it better for us. <laughs> okay, uh, after this, okay. Uh, enough time or enough? <laughs> this one, uh, I, I, try, I would like to go to, to, to PU for a while. My, my stomach full. Uh, you you want to have, have a break? Yeah, I go to the toilet for a while? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe we can have a break first. Uh, if you have any question, you can actually maybe write at the chat. Uh, and I put the link um, for registration. This one is actually for the USM staff. So if you want to have like the CPD points, so please fill in the form.
Uh, hello? Yes, Prof. Do I have more time or sh should I stop here? No time? Because, because of, the, of the way back? Uh, no. Oh. I'm, I'm okay. I'm very interested to know, especially the quantum brain. I think we can oh, just proceed. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, it's a tough topic. Um, I, I give my, 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 what, what I, you know, my, my opinion. Um, brain, uh, uh, people regard, uh, I think people regard as brain as, as an organ, but some nowadays uh, say it's not an organ, uh, because of that quantum principle. So people saying that, uh, uh based on this, um, brain wave and blah, 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 uh, which has coherent superposition and so on. Um, but one thing, brain, I think, cannot be transplanted. Uh, if you say about liver and kidney, you can transplant, do liver uh, transplant, kidney transplant, heart transplant. Uh, but to transplant the brain, uh, that's very tricky. You know, with the brain wave, with all the infinite energy, brain with infinite energy at the core of the brain, you want to, you want to do transplant. Uh, that's, I think, crazy. I think one guy, neurosurgeon from Italy, um, uh, three, four years ago, saying about this, want to do brain transplant or head transplant, and then he been bombarded by all the rest of neurosurgeon. <laughs> Say, uh, this guy gonna kill the patient? Not uh, doing the the signs, but killing, <laughs> killing signs. <laughs> okay, uh, I think brain is beyond an organ. Uh, it's not an organ. Um, brain. Um, it's not behave like kidney, liver, heart. Okay, uh, the reason for it because of the electromagnetic wave. That's one thing, the energy of the electromagnetic wave. But I think there's a, another hidden energy. We still don't know yet about that hidden energy. The universe dark energy you all he say hidden, but I think the brain also has hidden energy. Probably they are the same energy. They interact with the brain. Now, why they interact with the brain, not not with the liver? I think because of the, that electromagnetic wave, that core of the brain that to do with the life, life and death, the ultimate death at the at the at the golden ratio. That that's why that, I think that's this undetected energy might interact only with the brain. So that undetected energy, that's what Germany doing. You know, we try quantum detecting all the stuff, try to detect the undetected energy. Uh, probably his uh, his hypothesis is it's not like mine. I, I think in that way, I, uh, so he, he thinking of doing that quantum detector for something else, but I think it's something, um, you know, the, the hidden energy. That hidden energy probably when you combine with the electromagnetic wave energy probably explain this uh, uns, uh, unexplain, unexplainable, unexplainable yet psychosis, um, autism, schizophrenia, you know, crazy, people call it layman, crazy man. So I think that's because of the um, um, fraction, fractionated energy. Huh? The, the energy is fractionated or uh, asymmetry and so on. Then you have psychosis. That's the, the hypothesis, uh, the hypothesis based on that quantum. Okay. Um, probably you all know the quantum principle. Uh, I, I just uh, start to study it. So the quantum um, uh, yeah, the picture here is showing what very fast, special relative, very massive, general relativity, very small to do with the quantum mechanic. So quantum to do with this, uh, 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 energy as quantized uh, item. So uh, small, small uh, quantized uh, uh, item. It's not like a Newtonian uh, uh, classical physics. So when you go to the small world, the, the small world behave uh, differently. Um, so very small yeah here picture here very small very massive uh um yeah if you see here the very fast and very massive to do with the maybe general relativity but if you have very small very massive then to do with the quantum gravity which people still debate uh, i mean people still don't know what it is how to correlate a and b and then I think this fast, very massive and very small, also inside the brain, covering all three. Very fast, very massive and very small, also inside the brain. Um, this is the point I want to say about this picture here. This picture also say the brain and the heart, they are, they are correlate, the breathing, the up and down, always up and down. 
day and night, male and female, only 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 two. Okay, um, so up and down energy. Um, all, they have correlation between the heart and the brain. I show you later on. Um, yeah, the, the, this picture here saying that um, the universe, the biggest, smallest, the brain, everything. I think uh, people argue, hypothesize, the biggest now concentrated to the smallest. The biggest universe concentrated to the smallest brain. So brain is quantum. So that because of that quantum principle, so now they come out the illusion, the cosmic hologram. Okay, so the, another perception of it, the, the night perception, the, the 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 day perception. You say you are A, but the night perception turn out to be you are Z. Huh? So two opposite, the opposite met everything perfect. You have male, female, perfect. Uh, rich, poor, perfect. No rich, you don't know the poor. No poor, you don't know the rich. You have to have both. Uh, this picture. Yeah, here I want to say, I show it later many, many times. Now we are here. Brain, as in, uh, people study the brain here. People study the tissues of the brain. People study the cells of the brain. We call it cytology, tissues, and histology. And people study about the chemical, chemistry, molecules. And this one, not yet. Atoms, uh, atomic particle of the brain, uh, wave. Yeah, people study about the electromagnetic wave, the surface of the brain wave, the deep part of the brain wave. But I think, that's one wave. I think more than that. As I said before, there's another hidden energy. And bottom, uh, I think it's light. Everything in background is actually origin from the light. That, that's my hypothesis. I, I think it's everything is light here. Light, light, wave, particle. Correlation between light, wave, particle. Everything from the light. Um, people here, but not here yet. Uh, Japan now is uh, doing this DNA research based on subatomic particle. Japan, Japanese scientists, uh, DNA, RNA, and then they start doing the brain, I think brain cell. Oh, this, this show the diagram again. Um, your principle, you, you know, it's a particle wave duality debate. <laughs> you appear as uh, A and turn out to B, also can be B, particle wave duality. Uh, I say, because interesting, my, my late father used to say to me, uh, if you go to the ocean, then you see what is coming. That's the that's the reality. Kalau ikut kelantan juga, mau pergi patah, mau tengok gapoh mari itu jauh loh. Itu bahasa kelantan. That's kelantan language. He used to say to me, if you mau pergi mau pergi mau pergi patah, mau tengok mari itu itu jauh loh, itu gapoh loh, itu semua loh. So it means um the one that up and down, no ups and down, the energy. That, that's uh, matter the wave wave is the re some people wave is the reality okay but, um yeah wave particle duality so yeah this uh, uh, quote somebody said i think it's interesting to, to uh, highlight it again everything is energy everything is electricity every atom is merely an electric charge matter is a manifestation of this charge they are not physical entities they gain their quality of weight through the attraction of the charges to one another. Group enough charges together, they form gravity or mass. Gravity gives you weight. Electricity is magnetism, it is gravity. So everything uh, charms into one, hmm? sum up into one. Everything is light or light wave particle. Uh, originate from the light. That's why I, I write an article on infinite light uh, based on. I think the old man used to say the, the, the first cre uh, creation is not Adam's and the first creation is, is the light, the first light. The, um, I think if you look at the uh, Jews uh, Bible, they say the first creation is, is light. The, that what, after my writing, it turned out to be infinite light, same as their belief. <laughs> the, this, this one, look here, um, brain is quantum. Uh, why? Because from from the brainwave, this is a USM brainwave. It's our our brainwave data. Uh, they they look coherence uh, the wave and you know coherence. Uh, they have uh, superposition. They have uh, entanglement. If you evoke here opposite side, automatic opposite side. People say because of the uh, movement of the, uh, electric energy, but it's very fast. It's spooky fast. <laughs> So people say, oh, because of uh, movement, blah, blah, blah. But uh, some people don't believe that way. 
some people say it's an entanglement. Uh, just like here, wave here. We study on this patient with a problem. Here, there's a disease here, white one. Uh, and then the activity here automatically induces the activity on the opposite side immediately. Uh, so that's why I say, based on this, based on my electromagnetic wave, uh, there's elements of quantum for the brain. Um, that quantum entanglement travel very fast, faster than light. Okay, uh, people argue it's a beyond uh, velocity for the light. So this entanglement from the network, people say brain network, brain network, brain network, based on the electrical movement. But now, lately, one scientist say the network probably formed by the entanglement from the physicist, I think, the, from the entanglement because the network. Uh, work very fast. It's highlight here, it highlight at the front frontal lobe, it highlight at the parietal lobe, it highlight at the brain stem. It's very fast. The network work very fast. So plasma like quantum like I don't know. So, but interesting. Yeah, this is about duality again. I I'm talking about all all in pairs. I believe that all in pairs. For the creation all in pairs. Uh, um that's what happened in our in our country nowadays. Because of the you know people uh, lack of knowledge of who am I, then people start having uh, you know this behavior, cheating, stealing, uh, take one million, two million because they don't know who am I. Okay, um, the lack of that knowledge, the night knowledge. They know the day knowledge. They go to do this, to do the A, to fly to Z, go do and Z, but they don't know the night one. So, that's why they're ego, they are selfish, they, you know, they tend to be ego, talking ego, everything ego, they're not down to us like party, party down to us, because they like of who am I, the night knowledge. So the night knowledge view as, I didn't say as quantum physics, all are wave, all particle not exist, we not exist, there exists only one, Maha Esa. Uh, so if you look that way, then you, have, you become humble, you're not ego. Then when you combine, the night and day, you combine both, then you tend to work hard because you the night no the day knowledge you say you are you are uh, you are there you exist, okay. So you work hard, huh? You doing whatever you know hard. You 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 live in harmony. You live in the community well, because the rest are exist seems to be seems as exist, but in reality, um, in fact, all our energy, um, oh okay. Um, so once you be behave that way, you combine both. Um, hard work and no ego, not selfish, then you're going up. That's what happened in the Western world, I think, uh, because of that. Infinity light, first light, oh, yeah, that one. I, I need to go slow because uh, there's so, you know, <laughs> a complex thing happened here. So, um, talking about this entanglement, principle of the quantum physics, uh, uh, I think lecture given by um, Carol uh, from the physicist in US. Um, uh, I think you can get in in YouTube. Um, this uh, geometry and entanglement. And the, the lecture by him is interesting. I come out that entang entanglement also correlated with the geometry. Since we already look at the brain geometry as infinite shape, volta infinite shape, uh, dura, uh, you know, dura field. A shape swirling water and so on, all this geometry, geometry like I think there's something to do with the entanglement, geometry, and energy. Uh, this guy talking about universe, cosmos, but I think that also for the brain. Entanglement, geometry, and energy. They are correlated for the brain as well. <clears throat> okay, uh, so brain waves, is, uh, I think it's a code, it's an information. Okay? Information is a mess. I told you later, mess. Uh, so brain wave is information. So information can be messed with a heat. That's why if you study hard, then you become hot. Your brain becomes hot. Information with a with with a heat. Mess with the heat. So this picture shows brain and heart. Uh, um, study shows the big the up and down for the heart also correlate with the up and down brain wave for the brain. So I think there's a correlation between brain and heart. Okay. So you have four chambers for the brain, for the fluid chamber. You have four blood chamber for the for the heart, equal chamber, four chambers. Um, 
so mathematics are not uh, yeah this one just saying that you know this mathematics stuff we all have difficulty to understand it but mathematics i think the fundamental of everything so mathematical algorithm is for you all to make it uh, but i think this um, algorithm interesting because you need this when you want to publish papers unless it's a hypothetical or philosophical papers um okay this is another lecture uh, which catch me uh, brain is a multi physics and multi scale so uh, brain require mat multi mathematics and the playground of applied mathematics i think it's true this guy say so and i i i think it's true the playground for mathematics and as i said brain is a quantum uh, you can be viewed as wave just like when you look at the table you can look at the table as table particle or you can look at the table as wave so that wave of the table actually in communication with the cosmos wave everything is wave so everything in coherence as one field or one consciousness or one is a string like string theory so like there's a one everything is a all our wave so inside that room here you see the guy here you see the lady here you see the, the girl here but actually all are actually wave according to the night view if you if you if you have deeper eye uh, you see your eyes see different way your perception is different these are just on news illusion hologram okay then you become humble you know ego you tend to help people but you seen as just only one exists huh? only god exists maha Esa. so then you become humble then you tend to work hard because you have two sides creation always duality all in pairs day and night day you work hard um when you once you know you, you know that you not exist you should put back into that you are uh, exist you balance it those, those two knowledge the problem when you just only know that you are exist then your ego coming everything i i play this i i the good one i the bad i'm the rich one everything i mm -hmm. so i think that's what happened now um go back to the physics uh, um, this the guy talking about that um from the superficial to the depot so you have classical physics newtonian physics you go down to the uh, physics and then combination of quantum and field uh, uh, quantum field physics they have quantum field theory quantum field physics you go deeper and then uh, they say the deepest one is unified field i think this is for me is a infinite light it is a light for me uh same so physics and consciousness uh, this guy said the correlation with, with this too and i say all this infinite light infinite energy i start, I start from the beginning before big bang there's an infinite and uh, infinite light. that's that's my hypothesis um the infinite light drive the expansion but the question is the universe expand expand into what that's the big question if all are wave why the wave not clash that's another big question. If all are wave, why do we not clash? The, 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 the radio wave, the electromagnetic wave, why are they not clashing each other if all are wave? Uh, uh, okay, uh, based on this, um, they're talking about one field, one oneness, one consciousness. So uh, the hypothesis behind this, uh, one consciousness lift to divine. They say it's a consciousness, it's a divine thing. Uh, so if you have abnormality in your conscious level, that means um, you have fractured uh, quantum field principle, you have fractured consciousness, then you have psychosis, something to this uh, schizophrenia, psychiatric disorders. That, that, that people now are going into it. Uh, um, the, the scientists people into it. At the end of the day, I think they're going to the metaphysical. The, the ultimate understanding of the brain, I think they require, this guy say quantum physics, quantum biology, but I think we also need about we need to know about this night knowledge as well the night knowledge we don't uh, talking about soul is little but it's not zero little can be like go important uh, about soul is very little but it's not zero people say zero it's not it's little little can behave like expensive must be known uh, you know uh, not must be known uh, expensive very important to know very important to know um Oh, this is the same thing. When you look at table, it's, it's, it behave, it can be like particle and wave. Uh, the day is just superficial, the night is a deep one. 
So all this combination day and night, well, is the uh, balancing. Once you know both, you have to balance. You, you cannot stay in one. If you just stay in night, you tend not doing anything. If you stay in day, you just do everything. You feel ego. You have to balance between those two. And this is the question, why the wave not clash? Yes, uh, I'm going to publish this, pa this paper soon. Uh, why the wave not clash? I think because of the projected reality. Uh, I know this is my hypothesis. I am publishing to the hypothetical journal. Um, I think the, the, the Raja South, uh, Saudi South journal, I think quite good. Huh? The Raja Saudi, I think, uh, of open as 5,000 Malaysia ringgit. Uh, Saudi route, I think Q1 or Q2, I look into this. Q1, Q2 journal. Um, uh, yeah, back, back to this uh, infinite light. Infinite light, because the rest of the year expensive, 13,000, 12,000 open access. Uh, okay, uh, about the projected light. That's why I said everything is light, originate from light, infinite light. So that infinite light energy, infinite energy, one is transcended our our universe that been been formed in, initially by the Big Bang, or you call it transmit. Uh, it's not really bang, probably a uh, 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 transition between A and B. So you have initial light. So the the, the, the intersection of the light with the end of the light, the higher light with the lowest light, then you, you have vortex. So wave intersect with another wave, then you have vortex. That vortex appears as particle. That particle from the uh, object that you see now. And the question why all these particles have infinity shape? Because they're coming from the infinity height. They originate from the infinite light. That's why they are infinite shape. That's my hypothesis, okay? And you, you can see when this vortex form, they, they have two edge, electric edge and light edge. So electric, one edge, light, one edge. So diffuse here is a, a, a directional one. One directional, one diffuse. So this energy, the light energy, I think, which is not being found yet, uh, the diffuse light energy is not being detected yet. The electric, the, the uh, trajectory, the, the directional one, you study with a, a EEG, electromagnetic wave, the commonly studied one. But this one, the hidden energy not being detected yet. I think this, I think, I think, I think, okay? Um, that's why infinite shape in all of us. If you look carefully, everything infinite. And everything is bending. If you look at the tree, the, the branches also bending. All bending except us, except we. If you look at the cow, cow also in the horizontal. You look at the uh, fish horizontal. You look at the chick. Uh, you look at whatever is a bending. All bending, except us. But when we all we get we bend, so we're bending. That talking about vortex. Uh, yeah, this guy talking about vortex. So APS uh, infinite shape vortex. So all these are infinite shape. Bob, apricot, swirl, pylon, rubbish. And uh, from the wave, you can sh you can come up with uh, architecture of the wave. It's a vortex, and that vortex uh, can appear as infinite shape, and that infinite shape occupies the whole of our universe. So basically, all occupied by infinite light. So you can say all infinite light. Where infinite light coming from? The first creation. So oh yeah, back to that book. Um, this. I think our physicist somewhere a long time ago wrote that book and then he he, he get the wave from the, from those reading the Quran, I think Al Fatiha and then from that wave from that wave um he make it a transformation algorithm and then come up with a like this. It's a shape of Al Fatiha, a flower like from that green book. Uh, my brother in law gave it to me. I thought when uh, something not interesting, but when I read it, oh I said, damn, damn interesting. So here, uh, Surah Ar Rahman, so it's like this, very interesting. And then here, when you, that, that guy also, when, uh, doing the Fibonacci number, the golden ratio, it come up with like this, very interesting. But I think something to do with the brain as well. So water and infinite shape. So in between light and electric energy, the water form and they are infinite shape. So this is the wave. So each, this wave you view as 2D, if you in 3D, it's water like. So wave function, all these are wave function, all are wave. So this is a key. All the all this strictness, all particles in nature rising from continuous, diffuse, infinite light. Something to do with the diffuse light, like features, characters. All the discreteness in nature rising from continuous. 
just uh, that's my hypothesis. I published it, but I don't know if it's right or wrong. Just just a just a knowledge for for us to debate. Okay, quantum field, infinite light. Uh, look at the brain, brain wave. Uh, as I said, um, this the the fish is a brain wave, electromagnetic wave, the, the one that we commonly study. But the water, the quant, uh, we call it the uh, the hidden energy, or you call it quantum field, or whatever field, or whatever energy. I think this one is still hidden, the water one. You can it's a metaphorical, it's an analogy. It's an analogy between the fish and the water. The water is a hidden energy, but the fish is the electromagnetic energy. It's directional. The water is uh, diffuse. So if you have tumor like here in the brain, tumor there, so the electromagnetic wave behave like this, dispersed like uh, in the in certain direction. So you have a uh, uh, lack of electromagnetic wave here. Uh, but the water, I, I want to emphasize the vacuum, the water is full with activity, uh, the vacuum, the quantum vacuum. Uh, actually, it's not, vac it's not vacuum, it's full with en energy, maybe negative energy. So, atom can either be part of, yeah, uh, I think the presence of quantum field is not just only in the, in the universe, cosmos, but also it covers our brain as well. And it covers our brain, just, not just only cover, but it's also interact with our brain. Why interact with our brain, not with the kidney? Kidney also have quantum field. Kid liver also have quantum field. If you be, if you look at the string theory or look at everything as wave, but I think the quantum field or this hidden energy interact with the brain because of that, that center, yeah? the deep center of the brain. Uh, not sick of the soul per se, uh, it's something to do with the life and death. The, the word, the term, you can give any term you like, sick of the soul, whatever, but the soul is, is metaphysical. You cannot locate it. It's not to, to do with the time, place, it, uh, to, not, not to do with the, with the soul. Space, time, it's not for the soul. Okay, You cannot look, allocate it. Uh, uh, the term just only applies saying that that area is to do with uh, life and death. And I think that center, my hypothesis is, 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 is strongly interact with the hidden energy. Uh, this, uh, the paper that I'm going to publish, um, features of electromagnetic field and the hidden energy. I call it quantum field. Uh, people used to uh, say the cosmos quantum field, but here I'm talking about the brain quantum field. So you look the origin, uh, pro uh, the electromagnetic wave is a projected wave. As I showed before, it's a light to light dissection, uh, intersection. So when, once you have light to light intersection, you have projected wave. That projected wave once go inside your brain through your eyes, through your hearing. So you have electromagnetic evoke response. So we call it electromagnetic wave. So this is a physiological wave. But the brain itself is energy. The anatomy is energy. Okay? Anatomy, particle can be wave. So the quantum field, the, the brain anatomy is, itself is, is energy. So that energy interacts with the with the uh, electric field. So you have dual, everything in pairs, two energy for the brain. So wave pattern, you have present of pilot direction, which is one diffuse light, 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 light behave light. This is a low frequency, it's a high frequency, limited frequency, the wave shock, and it's a long wavelength, deterministic, not deterministic, it's a yeah, quantum, it's a high dimension, low dimension light, it's a concentrated, it's a concentrated, it's a widespread diffuse, it's a high entropy, it's a low entropy, brain network complex, this one's simple. Uh, well, it is more simple about psychosis, you know. Now, still, now people don't know about the psychosis, the schizophrenia, the psychiatric disorders, because it's complex. So, something to do with uh, this hidden energy. That's what I think. The evil response here, yes, is a small evil response. Therefore, to produce, to detect this is not easy. Um, uh, neuroplasticity happened here for EMF, but not here. Uh, yeah, here, 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 you can see one. This is a publication for me, not to copy it, <laughs> guys. Okay, it's a entropy, low to high entropy, middle part. Uh, yeah, entropy, uh, talking about entropy, I think something related with the brain as well. So, um, as aging, it's like you know, aging process when you're young to old, you're, you're becoming uh, this entropy, or you can be disordered, more disordered. Eh? But for cosmos, disorder becoming ordered. Order, disorder, order. Maybe for the brain like that as well. Order, disorder, order. When you relax, order. And then when you're reading hot, disorder, and then order again. Order, disorder, order. Low entropy, high entropy, low entropy. So always intertwined. So the complex one, when it here, in between, low and high entropy, this is the complex one. The middle part is the complexity arise. The same with the cosmos, same with the brain. 
the complexity arise with particular light okay and um, before I go beyond I think the brain also have plasma features as well I'm not going to go deeper but I think this one the plasma features for the brain because the study uh, done for the um, pathway I'm right? talking about the edge zone just now pathway the white matter track uh, the picture here again by using the anisotropic principle so the flow of the water okay they say the flow of the water uh, uh, maybe something to do with the plasma I don't know but I think something need to be explored in fact one guy published this again Japanese a uh, plasma model of brain physics in 1972 this paper is a long one but, uh, 1972 the the the, the one probably said um okay this is a long paper 1972 the previous paper is a uh, uh, not that long um this one is a long paper 1972 about plasma and brain isotropy and isotropy i think you've got a couple of slides i got brain physics 9 i think finish at brain physics 9 uh still got time or do i need i think nearly finish eh? uh -huh. You still have how many slides, bro? Because it's already 35. Oh, yeah, time to. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just, yeah, I just <laughs> skip. I just skip. Uh, brain, uh, as I said before, brain wave and information. And information, you have heat. So everything is heat. Uh, brain as heat. Here is a mess with a heat. Uh, information, brain waves um, uh, is a mess is a, with a heat. So what I'm trying to say here. Um, uh, uh this is an important slide brain wave actually it's a visualize visualizing our thought as images according you you can visual visualize thought uh, based on brain wave that one from nasa uh paper uh, uh, um, uh power slide powerpoint slide uh what else uh, uh yeah i want to say we have data here brain wave data if they want to study it it's a deep nuclear data those with the parkinson we put the uh, electrode inside you can study the, the, the brain wave. And in fact, the paper say the, the, here is an infinite wave. Here is a finite wave, which is interesting. Background is infinite. Um, yeah, I can skip on this. This is our data. We have brain wave data. Okay. Um, this shows superposition for the brain wave. And show the brain wave correlate with the Earth. Um, Schumann wave and the brain wave. You know, the brain wave have um, delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma, hypergamma, lambda. It's a very high one. You can go up way or you can go down way. If you go down way, you, I think you find a hidden energy. If you go up way, you also find a hidden energy. So that's why when you do uh, uh, some sort of healings, uh, you're going up or you're going down either way. So brain also have vibration to do the brain wave uh yeah it's, it's a dead brain wave i think something is uh it's not really flat it's not isolated it's a background energy that's what i think probably somebody can uh, create software to enlarge to like energize this brain dead wave <clears throat> maybe there's a hidden energy behind it <clears throat> yeah i think this one you all know is a radiation for the neurosurgery for the brain radiation to treat the tumor so basically you have three radiation here so you have proton base, uh, subatomic particle, or photon, you have gamma knife, we call it gamma knife from the gamma rays, and you have linac based on X-ray, X-ray wave. So the, the subatomic particle you, you, you get from the cyclotron, normally you create in, in the room, and then you collect the isotope, and then you inject into the patient. Uh, subatomic particle is a gamma knife radio surgery. If you go to the private practice, uh, physicists, then you have gamma knife like this. You put the fashion head, and then you, you shoot, uh the, the gamma rays to the brain tumor uh, this is a linac you can show it as well cyber knife uh, with a frame i think that's all uh i think you need this brain physics laboratory multidisciplinary approach uh so brain is complex it's, brain is not an organ okay uh that's all uh i think my lecture thank you thank you everyone <laughs> thank you prof uh, I think to me, it, it, the information is, is, is very overwhelming. Um, I've, I've learned a lot as well because sometimes we learn physics, but we tend to, how do I say, take, taking the physics for granted. So at least now we can see some kind of like a, a very good correlations um, from the one that we've learned.
physics part and then how it's actually applying the brain. Uh, I will open for any question. If you have any question from the participants before we end the session. Yes. 